And we're back. SGC's got a new deal with Tops for $9 grading. And we've got a new sports card documentary slash movie that has just come out. We're going to talk about these couple of things. Stick around. to all my sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles friends. For all my U.S. friends, we have finally bounced back, hopefully, from Thanksgiving dinner. I'm actually still full from the amount of food and beverages I took in over the last week. I'm about to roll down a hill. But seriously, starting to bounce back to some degree. Hope everybody had a great holiday week. If you're new here, you're looking for almost daily sports card content when I'm not out of town in the middle of nowhere in a cabin and I don't have any internet. Then you have come to the right place. Hit the big red button, the subscribe button down below. Also connect with me on IG at Sports Card Dad, and I'm also on Twitter, the Sports Card Dad. All right, guys, out of nowhere, channel sponsor SGC. Let me go ahead and just put that out there now. They are a sponsor of this channel. So for those that are like, Bleh, you don't disclose enough, you haven't already disclosed 10,000 times. We're coming with another disclosure. They are a sponsor of the channel. I'm a big fan of SGC as well as the other grading companies, but have to put that out there. They have a new deal with Tops. $9 a card? $9 a card. They want the Bowmans. They want all the first Bowman baseball cards. It's a huge product for baseball card collectors. Bowman Chrome is out and they want a piece of it. So it's $9, there's no declared value maximum, there's no minimum cards, and also includes auto grades for free. I just don't, I'm trying to find something wrong with this and I can't find it. I think this is great for the consumer. And honestly, if this was any of the grading companies, I would say the same thing. I mean, $9, you got free auto grade included, and then also you've got you know no maximum declared value. This is about as sweet as it gets from a price point standpoint. So I have to assume this in part is a way for Tops to kind of make sure that they sell all of it. It gets ripped. Because I think with the economic slowdown, et cetera, that we talk about, I mean, look, if they've printed a lot of this stuff, which I'm guessing they probably have, they need it to get open. They need it to get sold. We finally do have a lot of retail product just sitting on shelves. And so this is kind of a fun way for people to you know, grade cards at a low price point to where they can actually maybe resell some of it or just maintain values. So I know there's a lot of baseball card prospectors. I'm not one of those. Unfortunately, I just, I'm not a big baseball fan and then especially not on the prospecting side with any sport, but I do respect and understand the guys that are in the stats. They're in all the minor league games or paying attention to all the stuff and they want to get in early on a player, just like, you know, Mike Trout going back to 2010, 2011. You know, everyone's looking for that next Mike Trout, and that's kind of the fun of it. So I, I totally understand kind of that fun, and with price points coming down on a lot of this stuff, whether it be just the cost of product as well as grading costs in this in this example, that is a good thing for consumers. Yep, Daniel. I like what SGC did here in the sense that they went a little bit outside of the box as far as kind of a marketing plan and setting up a deal, and this is something that I hope is done more and more in the future where you've got specific products coming out, and you've got special grading prices is attached to that. That's a win-win for customers. This is the coolest thing I have ever seen. Also, we have a new sports card movie that came out, Behind the Card. Did I say that right? Behind the Card. We're actually going to have the director of this movie coming on Off Centered on Brad, the Comeback Card Investors channel on Wednesday night at 9 p.m., I believe, Eastern Time. This is still going to be the time for it. I was going to say, too, if you've seen the documentary or you've seen kind of the movie and you have any questions surrounding it, please put them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to try to get some of these questions answered. I have not seen it yet. I am planning to watch it tonight leading up to that interview, so I've got kind of a good frame of reference as to what we're talking about Wednesday night. The one thing, though, is I did watch a trailer, and it immediately looks somewhat dated, the information and kind of the characters involved in it. Nothing against how it was done. I'm, I've heard that production is, is very high as far as production value goes. I'm sure the editing is great. I'm sure they piece the stories together well. So nothing against that piece of it at all, but I think that just watching that trailer, my first just first instinct, first reaction is just the information seems a little bit dated at this point, but 
you know, let's, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to watch it, kind of see if I'm maybe missing something. I'll take notes throughout. I'll probably do a video just kind of summing up my thoughts on that probably later in the week or next week. Um, but we will also have the director on on Wednesday night. And so also I'll take notes from that as well, just to see if we can kind of piece all, this whole thing together. But all in all, I'm excited to watch a sports card movie slash documentary or whatever that you want to call it, even if it is just kind of a 2020, 2021 time capsule, you know, type moment. Also caught a tweet by the collectibles guru that I thought was interesting, and it was referencing select football boxes. Basically, he was saying they're asking about $850 per box for this particular product, but then also making note that one of the best hits in that box, and I believe it's a Trevor Lawrence gold auto of some sort, just recently sold for $1,025. Making the point that you know, the hobby box is 850 and one of the better cards in the entire set, one of the chase cards, the big chase cards, is right at about $1,000. And he was, goes on to say, stop buying the new sealed product and just buy singles, which really been talking about this for a couple of years. The, the print runs on a lot of this stuff is a little bit scary over the last two years. It's just the companies, I think, reacted to the big inflow of demand. And now we've got a lot of product being printed. And so we just got to be mindful of that. This isn't news to people that have been around for a little bit, but it might be news for someone that's just joining today or last week, last month, et cetera. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm excited to be back with you guys. I missed a few days. I kind of had to schedule some videos in advance and I'm back. So I'm glad to be back. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.